Now that we've covered most of the very basic tools that InDesign has to offer, it's important to talk about another very important aspect of the software, and that's dealing with the pages and then the master pages that you can create. So this is going to be somewhat similar to using a, um, a slide master in PowerPoint. Over on the right side of my screen, I have a pages option. If I don't see this particular menu, Remember, you can go up to Window and grab Pages. So within here, see that this is actually another way for you to navigate through your document. So any page that I'm double clicking on, that's what page is going to be in front of me right now. It's not terribly obvious because my document's empty, but as you start putting things in, you'll see how useful this can be, especially if uh, you're working on a very long document. It can be somewhat tedious to sit and scroll through. So this is kind of an index of your project. Up above at the top, see that there's a divided section and there's one that says none up here and then there's another option that says a master. So by default, all of your pages have a master on them. That's why you're seeing this capital A in the corner of each page. And that just happens to be blank. So if we put something on this A master, it will go on every page. So for those of you that are, you know, creating a portfolio or some document where you want either all of the pages to be laid out the same or several of them, this is going to be a great way to go. So you don't have to copy and paste objects from one page to the other. You can actually set them up so they're already there. It will also help prevent you from clicking on things by mistake and moving them and, and that kind of thing. So if I want to edit this A master, all I have to do is double click on the name. So notice when I do that, the other pages went away and now I just have this one page to work with. So once again, if I you know double click on pages two and three, for example, you'll see that I have all of my pages here. If I double click on A master, I only have that master page to work with. All right. So let's just use a couple of our tools, um, you know, as an example of how this might work. So within my page, you know, setting up your portfolio can be fairly tricky. It's really hard to know where to start. And I would say in the beginning, just try to keep it simple. All right, that's the best strategy to go. So right now, I'm just going to set up a few big rectangles with color fills in them. Uh, because really I want the background to be the background and you know my renderings my drawings and things That's what I really want to stand out so I might come in and just grab the rectangle tool here and Create a box so maybe I'm thinking I want one side of the page to be one color uh, And the other side a different color so I'm just going to click and drag and the last uh, video I made, I happened to use this type of gradient. I don't really know that I would want a green radial gradient like that. So I might just come into the swatches and pick black. That's, that's maybe what I want to actually do. Okay. Then up above here, notice I could actually change the size to fit the page perfectly if I wanted to. I could actually type in the measurement. In this case, I'm really fine with it extending past the edges. It won't actually print that way, but it's making sure that it's going edge to edge. I can just zoom in to see how it's meeting on that center line. For example, if I want to nudge something, you see that you can use the arrow keys on your keyboard to nudge that into place. Okay, so I just put a basic rectangle on that layer. If I wanted to, I could also, for example, maybe do another rectangle going across the bottom on the other side. Make that one black as well. And you know, maybe this one I'm thinking, just so I have a vague idea that the height will maybe be three inches. Okay. That'll just help me, you know, know later how big that is. All right, so now I have uh, this basic spread with a black page and a white page. 
And if I wanted to, I could get, you know, a little bit fancy and maybe I want to do a, another box on the other side to create kind of the reverse. What I could do is just simply highlight this one, do a right click and copy it or do control C and then I can right click again and notice here you have some options. If I just say paste, it will paste this object directly in the center of my screen. I'm just going to undo that. I could also say paste in place and in this particular situation that's not super important but in the future it might be. That will actually paste it directly on top of the other one but in the future I'll show you how that can actually be pasted in the exact same location on a different page. So just be aware that that's there. But now I can shift and click and drag that over perfectly horizontal and I could change that to white and now I have you know the reverse going on on each page I think I might tuck that up just to make that a little easier on my eyes okay so we have kind of an opposites thing going if you're not quite clear on what this is going to look like when you print keep in mind that you're going to have some different viewing options in InDesign we can change our viewing up above and we have this box right here at the top that's called screen mode and we can go from normal and that's our working view where we're seeing all of the margins and frames or I can go to preview for example and this is more like what it would look like when I print so I don't see all those frames and things so now I'm getting an idea of what this might look like Let's go back to normal we can also go up to the word view and screen mode and find that same information right here. All right, so you know, maybe for right now, I'm thinking that looks pretty good. So if I go back to pages, notice that that's on every single page. So if I just double click to get out of that and zoom out, that particular information is on every single page. If I don't want that on every page, I can go in and make some modifications. For example, maybe my opening page, I really just want to be blank. I want to do something very special or unique to that page. I can just come in and up where this one says none, I can just grab that and throw the none on there. And now you see that my first page is blank. So that can be a good way to go if that's going to be your title page, you want to put your name on it or something like that. And now all of these pages are identical. If you wanted to do something where there were certain pages that were different, we have some options here. So on the word A master, I can right click. On this page, I can say that I want to make a duplicate master spread of A master, which will be identical, or I could just do a completely blank master page. So let's just do that to see what that's like. So I can say new master and then we have a few options here it will just come in as B so it'll come in a B C and so on I could say that I wanted it based on the a master page and just change it or that it's based on none and how many pages do I want this to be I can also change the proportions and so on so at this point just to illustrate it make it very obvious I will say just B master based on none okay so it looked like this so now I could come in and do something different just to make sure that we can see the difference so I might grab a rectangle and you know on this page I'll just have a line going across maybe through the center there a little bit right through the midpoint and I will make that um, red for example uh, with whoops I will say no line around it okay now go back to pages and I can just grab this and you know bring this down to baby pages six and seven and I have to do each page to get it to happen on each page so I could do it on pages 10 and 11 as well so if I go back to my document and zoom out you'll see that we have no master page on our intro then a 
and B and A and B and so on. So you can have as many master pages as you need to and make them as similar or as different as you want to help you set up your document.